Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere, together in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, finally, to bring you all the latest technology, the superstars of voiceover today, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. And now, from their super secret studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop, or VO. BS. And probably more so tonight than any other night there is. Um... Uh, <laughs> Well, no. At least we, until Chris comes on. At least until Chris, because he will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing <clears throat> but the truth. We love Chris. We do. Chris Fries is our guest tonight uh, on VoiceOver Body Shop, and he's uh, not in the studio with us. He's still in his home in Yorba Linda, California, because he had to go work out. Well, yeah. Plus, he was already out here yesterday. That's true. All day, yeah. probably. So, yeah. And, and nobody wants to be on the five this time of day, it's, so we appreciate him. He's far enough. That's it's, true. It's, it's just far enough that it's not that convenient to get out here. Right. But we appreciate him coming on. He'll be with us yes. uh, in about half an hour and uh, talk about all the great stuff going on in his career because he won an award last night. He sure did. At the Voice Arts Awards. And we want to talk about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a couple of great questions tonight to talk about and hopefully not too technical, probably because they're not very technical. They're. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah, sometimes well, they get too, uh, too in-depth yeah. for the show. Sometimes I think people just throw us stuff to, just to see if they can... Stump, us, the, stump, the, stump, stump the stars stump here. Stump the chump, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> don't think that's going to happen tonight. I think we, I think right. we got the answers. Um, Thanks, Google. Yes. And if you have a question for us, throw it in the chat room. I know Anthony Gettig, our magnificent uh, chat room monitor, is probably watching from Kalamazoo. Is he there in there? He is. He's All in right. The chat room. Thank you, Anthony. And, and Shelly, our backup chat room monitor. So we have full participation in the chat room tonight. Right. I was in Vegas all weekend. Attending a board retreat for World Voices. Top secret location? Uh, no, it was at Dave Quavassier's television station. Actually, <laughs> oh, really? Which was actually kind of cool. That is neat. Yeah, no, high tech conference room. We actually, the thing was, is we all sat down at the table and I'm like, should we still all watch each other on Zoom? Right. <laughs> so, so used to seeing each other only on yeah, Zoom. Yeah, it's usually like the Brady Bunch. Yeah. But no, it was, it was great being with everybody. Cool. And we made some great plans and great leap forwards and. Excellent. So you'll you'll hear about that stuff as time progresses over the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. We got Chris Fries. We have questions, and we have what we always like to have every week at this time. We have the news, and here's the news for November sixteenth from Voiceover Extra News. First off, our best wishes go to Nancy Florian, uh, Voiceover Extras publisher, John Florian's wife, who's dealing with some health issues. Nancy, we love you. We understand you're doing a lot better. Keep it up, and uh, hopefully she'll be feeling better by next week, and life will be yeah. better for everybody. But John still sent us the news uh, because the voiceover community is grieving and voicing in solidarity with their friends in France who experienced their own 9-11 last Friday and who are now living and working in states of national emergency and war. So the article says, meet French voice actor Orléans. Voiceover Extra met Orléans online earlier this year and asked him to write about voice acting in France. Mm -hmm. And that article will appear soon. This past weekend, Voiceover Extra asked Orléans how he's doing, especially with all the stuff going on there in Paris. Well, like most of us, he's always online, and he quickly told us this. And I won't do it with a French accent. Please, thank we'll, you. We'll stay serious here. My family and I are okay. We got good news this weekend that everyone is okay. We live outside Paris, about two hours distance, yet don't want to go outside and, of course, afraid to go to Paris. Mm. President Hollande declared three mourning days, and so we lit up candles. There are cops everywhere, whatever the hour of the day. He was stopped yesterday afternoon when he was driving. 
Uh, the police were very compassionate and reassuring, but still on alert, mm. end quote. So uh, anyway. Good to hear from somebody. It's doing yes. okay. Yes. To our Leon and all our voice actor friends in France and throughout Europe, please know that our thoughts and prayers and voices are with you. Indeed. And now in the U.S., uh, two items of note. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you've been anywhere near social media in recent weeks, which of course I think we are almost every day. Surgically attached. Yeah. It's remove me. <sighs> um, yeah. you probably know about the firestorm that ignited over hidden fees that might be lurking in payments from online casting services. Now this followed an online interview of voices.com CEO, David Cicerelli by edge studios, your employers, Graham Spicer. For instance, it was learned that voice actors, Winning a job online, they, they might be paid as much as, as less than half of what was originally in the client's budget, sometimes more than half. Speaking on behalf of its over 500, now almost 600 voiceover members, hmm. World Voices Organization has admonished the pay-to-play services to be fully transparent about finances. The Wovo statement and response from CEO Cicerelli are in an article today in VoiceOver Extra. Mr. Whittem. And finally, pressing the button. There you go. Last night in Hollywood, scores of winners of the 2015 Voice Arts Awards were announced at an elegant gala presented by the Society of Voice Arts and Sciences. Congratulations to the winners. And we've got one here tonight. All right. And you'll meet them soon in a voiceover extra report at on the evening's festivities. I got a little video package I shot uh, oh, from last night. Just a one clip. Uh, Billy, uh, William, William Shatner, Billions, William Shatner, William, William Shatner, <laughs> Shatner, Shat. <laughs> William Shatner was there last night, and he accepted an award. Uh, I think it was like an achieve, like a lifetime achievement, achievement award. award yeah. yeah, it was a big deal. And it's a little clip from that speech I thought was kind of entertaining. <laughs> you rock. That's the nicest thing anybody ever said. Bruce, you make that whole story up. <laughs> so. So this gentleman is taking my picture and he said, I didn't know you did voiceover work. <laughs> I said, you mean, you, mean, you mean commercials? He said, yeah. I said, well, voiceover work this doesn't just mean commercials. I mean, voiceover work encompasses a lot of things. Like, you know, voiceover work. <laughs> he said, how long have you been doing it? I said, well, uh, since I was 10. <laughs> And when I was 10, I think, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation did a... Yeah. What do you know about the Canadian <laughs> So, the producer, I was doing uh, adolescent voices on the radio, and the guy said, uh, yeah, we're doing a commercial, can you do pain? I can do pain. He said, all right, we're rolling, do pain. I, no, 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 no. Do pain. Oh, no, Shatner, do pain. Oh, shit, that's it. Okay, that's pain. <laughs> so, uh, after that, it went on. And on. Anonymous and unheralded. That's voiceover work. That's me. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> So I was doing um, a uh, audio book. Uh, uh, a book that I had written. And I got to the word garage. So I, I got it. And I opened the door uh, and uh, went into the garage. And the, and the producer said, no, 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 it's garage. <laughs> and I said, uh, no, 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 it's a, it's a garage. So I, I opened the door and I went into the garage. He says, no, it's garage. I said, no, the word is garage. He said, no, it's garage. I said, look, this is my book. <laughs> You may say garage, but I say garage, and this is my book, it's, you know, by William Shatner, about William Shatner. And I say garage. He says, it's garage. I said, it's garage. He says, it's garage. I said, garage, garage. He says, 
says it's a garage. I said it's a garage. And we had, a, and, and finally, I was yelling garage, and he was saying garage. We had reversed positions. <laughs> we never did resolve the argument, and then I heard. He pirated this tape and was playing it all around. He was playing like, uh, what's his name about, uh, the, you'll know, you'll not release any wine until it's time. The Orson Welles tape. They were playing Garage Garage. Voice over. <laughs> So let that be a lesson to you, Bill. <laughs> be careful what you say in a session because really? it's all being recorded. Anyway, it was a lot of fun last night. The The event was a huge success by everybody's report that I talked to. Everybody had a lot of fun. People looked glamorous, beautiful, and uh, I hope to come back next year. I got to see a lot of good friends, people. I couldn't believe some of the people that came into town. I saw Rob Sig Siglin Paglia. Yep. Can you say his name for me? Rob Siglin Paglia. I kind of said it right. Voice yeah. actor, attorney, actor. Screen? Floor Rex and Breath. <laughs> he's he's got a lot going on. Nice. Trey Mosley is in the chat room. I saw him last night. You met Trey? I did, yeah. Well, I can't wait to meet him myself. It's amazed the folks that came out for it. Really? So. Came all the way to LA for that? And that's mm -hmm. fabulous. Maybe next year we'll go. Yeah. No, I think next year we'll 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 try to enter and get nominated. I think we'll, uh, we'll have at least one good show. We'll have our act then. together. Yeah, we'll yeah. have a good fifty shows to choose from by next year. So we'll <laughs> or, find something. Or, or more. <laughs> anyway, um we've got more stuff coming up tonight. We've got a couple of great questions we want to answer. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris Fries will be with us. You want fries with that? <laughs> yes. He'll we do. be there. We do. And uh, so uh, why don't we take a break? Get it. And we'll talk to you a little bit more about more stuff in just a minute. So don't go away. VO Studio Tech. Recording made simple. Hi, I'm Peter McHugh. This is Jim Tasker from Los Angeles, California. Hi, this is Bill Ratner in Los Angeles. Hi, this is Scott Rummel here in Yorba Linda, California. Hi, my name is Rick Wasserman. Hi, this is Tom Kane. Hi, my name is Vanessa Marshall. Hi, my name is Zurich. Hi, I'm Mary McKittrick. Randy Thomas chiming in. Hi, this is Joe Szymanski. Hey, this is Rick Robles. Hi, my name is John Patrick Armstrong. I was turned on to George by none other than Don LaFontaine, who always swore by his help. George is absolutely awesome. ISDN, Source Connect, Phone Patch, FTP, you name it, Georgia set it up. It's really the best thing I've ever done for myself. I feel free, safe, fearless, like anything is possible in here. Unless you like to look for opportunities to waste time, call George. And he did all of that, long distance over the phone and the internet. I'm very happy with George and uh, I cherish him. Thanks, George. You make it easy. Every Monday, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Voice over body shop. I love when they talk BS about you. And we're back. And we're going to talk about one of our sponsors. This is, this is one of the items our sponsor likes us to talk about. And you can see it's now totally transparent. I know, the chroma key, the blue is not working we'll, with we'll, the key. We'll do that one. Let's go to this camera because this camera has sound. We were doing a silent movie there about the product for a little okay. while. We were Sorry talking about, about Harlan Hogan's Portabooth yeah. Plus here, <laughs> which 
you know, fortunately in a hotel room, you have a little bit more room to work with, but I think right. I got it now. All right. So you zip this thing on. Ah. Uh-huh. You got it? Yeah, I got it. And I got the sound fixed. Very okay, good. Okay, good. Pat All on right. my back. All right. Everybody's laughing because no, they can't hear us. Exactly. All right. Anyway, uh, so you zip this part on, and it creates the perfect little pillow fort. It fits together with some Velcro up here, and then you put your microphone through the back. Through through the back. It's designed really for a 416 or a good shotgun mic, but you could use an Epigee mic or even yeah. a smaller condenser mic. I think it's a good Apogee mic companion too. It is. Mm -hmm. And then we've we've talked about technique for this thing, but mm -hmm. let me see it go this way. If you talk into the top of it, into the top lip with the mic down there with proper yeah. proper stuff, uh -huh. it works great. And it will keep out exterior noise. But the great thing is is it stops it it completely diffuses the sound so you don't sound like you're in a, a larger room. Yeah. It knocks down a lot of echo. Right. Now these are only available one place. They're available at uh, voiceoveressentials.com. Mm -hmm. And sure. if I can assemble one of these, imagine how easy it is for you. Exactly. We can do it live on a TV show. Right. With no room to work with. No so, rehearsal. No yeah, rehearsal. Yeah, no rehearsal at all. Anyway, um, along with the Harlan Hogan VO1A signature series microphone, mm -hmm. you could use that in there as well. It mm -hmm. could be complete Harlan Hogan material from voiceoveressentials.com. And you wouldn't be hurting your business at all. You'd be making it better because he's got the best stuff in the world made specifically for voiceover. And if you go over to voiceover.com, you can buy that fine product, this fine product, and things like his headphones and all the other great stuff he's got there. What does he have there? You have to go to his website and you'll spend hours there perusing through all the cool stuff that Harlan has at voiceoveressentials.com. Right. And you can buy it simply by clicking on it. And spending your money there. It's all hand curated stuff. If it ain't for voiceover, it ain't on there. Yeah, it's got no it's got no business no being business. there. You know, no business. it doesn't sell refrigerators and irons and, and, and you know and cat food. And, and you know, and Vitamixes and stuff like that. Only voiceover stuff. So go over to voiceoveressentials.com. You can go there real easily after the show, of course. Go to the bottom of our page, there's a picture of Har picture of Harlan talking into one of his famous porta boots mm -hmm. and It'll take you right there. It'll take you right there, and he'll know that we sent you. And mm -hmm. that's important because we want him to keep sponsoring the show. Yeah, tell him you sent, we sent you. That's right. So thanks. anyway, thanks, Harlan. Thank you, buddy. How many episodes has he been with us? 200 and uh, day, whatever. Lost count. Never mind. All right. <laughs> Voiceoveressentials.com. Go there. Cool. We got some chat room questions. Excellent. Chat room and fan questions. Time so, for chat room check-in. Yeah. So the first one I saw that came in, came in from... Tom Deere. Tom Deere. The H is silent. Though. The H is silent. But his I, voice isn't. It? That's right. I just got a voice. What did he get? Oh, I just got a Focusrite Scarlet 2i2. 2i2. I record. We all love this. We, I record using Adobe Audition 1.5. Ancient. That's a square stone wheel there, yeah. Tom. Where, why does it cap at minus 6 dB when I record in 32-bit, but when I can record as loud as I want in 16-bit? He says, thanks. Well, it's interesting. There's more than one solution to the problem, apparently. Tom stumbled on the fact that when he plugs his mic into input one of the Scarlet, it fixed the problem. Interesting. Why? I have no idea. Something about the sound routing in in Adobe Audition's multi-track view. And in fact, a little bit of digging around on the inside Adobe Audition Facebook group, which if you use Adobe Audition, I recommend that you dig that up. It's really great. Um, Emmett Andrews said... Uh, I do know exactly what this is. Audition's edit view when recording in mono defaults to recording a sum of the left and the right inputs. With a dual channel interface with a single mic plugged in, it will be only getting half of the signal. Hence, a minus 6 dB limit. So oh, basically 50% is 6 dB. When, uh, you, when you knock something down by 50%, it's 6, 6 dB. dB right. Um, the fix in the hardware setup, it needs to be set for mono input, presumably input one. So make sure, uh, zero one M not zero one S, which is actually one plus two is selected. So that's for all you slew of people still using 1.5 and 10 uh, of you maybe. Right. Yeah, and so the answer <laughs> to that, Tom is stop using 1.5 <laughs> and update to at least a number, you know, to, to series six or, yeah, yeah. or get on the cloud or something. Yeah, but like it's, that. it's a workaround that you can do. Yeah. So it's uh, not like the end of the world. Yeah. You want to get this one from Johnny Panzarella? Can you read it on your screen? Is I can, it closer? I, I think I should be able to. It's kind of far away. Let's see here. Yeah. All right. 
Uh, okay. He says, uh, hi guys. Love your show. We love you. Gary. Yay. All right. Uh, Johnny. Uh, okay. I'm Johnny Panzarella voiceover talent with Atlas. Wouldn't we, I'd love to be with Atlas. Wouldn't yeah, we like, uh, wondering if I can send you an audio file. The wave size is way too small. Trying to make it reach closer to the lines while still allowing plenty of headroom. Mm-hmm. He's throwing a lot of terms around here. Sure, whether yeah. he completely understands the, lines the terms. lines in the headroom, yeah. Right, okay. I'm already pushing it past the unity lines on the mixer. Okay. Still, tiny wave. Yeah. A tiny, tiny little wave. Sounds okay. Yeah, it sounds okay, but wanted to get your thoughts, if I may, thanks. Yeah. Uh, and then... The answer comes through. He says, Johnny said, his compressor output is too low. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, he, he, he saved us a lot of time, time. because good night, everybody. Because yeah, <laughs> I was night. the next thing I was going to have to ask him is what equipment does he have? How is it all hooked up? You have to figure out the gain staging. Where mm-hmm. and it sounds like to me, he's got a sort of a more traditional voice studio or radio studio where he's got a mic preamp, channel strip with a compressor, a mixing console, a lot of places to adjust levels. Right, so we'd right. have to go through each stage, stage by stage, right. to figure out. He's what looking it at is. the VU meter on the on the on the mixer. Right, it's like it's it's fine. Right, and then for some reason it's not right. Yeah, going into his computer. Yeah, I mean you can get decent recording quality recording too low. Right, but you know it's annoying if you have to always gain it up, and sometimes it'll bring up the noise when you do that. Right, you don't want to normalize everything That's if right. you can avoid it. So, it's uh, I'm glad you figured it out, but I'm it's just I wanted to you know just wanted to talk about simplicity. If you don't need all that gear, you know, unplug the extraneous stuff or hit the bypass button on the gear. What, what we're finding is, <laughs> now, now remember, and we've mentioned this before, all of the stuff that we use mm-hmm. for recording voiceover was designed for recording music right. and musicians and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, it really wasn't designed for voiceover. Mm-hmm. Yet recording engineers, that's just the stuff they've been using for years. Sure. And they recommend, oh, you got to have this, you got to have this. Or you came out of radio or you're a real mm-hmm. radio geek and you got to have yeah, exactly. all the channel strips and all that stuff. I've been discovering that that stuff doesn't really help you all that much because it's not, it's making sensitive microphones like say a U87 even more sensitive. Yeah. So yeah. you're, you're hearing, you know, planes taking off two counties away. If you use a compressor incorrectly, it, it makes the quieter stuff louder. Which is the exact That's opposite of what, what you, want. you want. So, you know, be careful. it's, it really helps if you take all this stuff designed for music and yank it out of your rack and put it on eBay or sell it to your favorite rock band for an empty profit. Unless, yeah. unless you're like our friend, Chris here, right? He's going to be on the show soon. Once we stop who, blabbing, who is a promo, who does guy. promo stuff. He's doing live ISDN sessions. The studio wants to get a nice, hot, even signal, and then it makes, you know, makes sense. So, right. But maybe, how many of you are doing that out You know, there? it's hard to say. Johnny's with Atlas. He may be doing that kind of that, work. That may indeed be know. the case. Well, but, perhaps we need to investigate a little yeah. bit further. But he solved the problem because his, compre- his makeup gain, as makeup we say, gain, yeah. was not loud enough. Exactly. Um, this one came from Nate Carlson, our, one of our buddies. He's a frequent contributor. He says, is it okay to upgrade my Mac Mini to El Capitan? Anyone saying home studios are being messed up with that update? Thank you. What are you hearing? Uh, I, well, a little bit here. Your there. mileage may vary. If yeah. you are on a Thunderbolt, uh, no, if you're on a Firewire audio interface, don't upgrade Go. to El Capitan. Yeah. Basically, don't upgrade to El Capitan yet. I, every time there's a new version, 10.10, whatever it is, now it's 10.11, I always wait to the 0.2 or the 0.3 <laughs> iteration because that means they've had two rounds of debugging. And fixing things before. So I'm a big fan of waiting. If you have a secondary laptop, MacBook, or something that's sort of just a day-to-day office computer, it's probably not nearly as big a deal. But if you've got that computer connected to mission-critical right. production if, if hardware... It's part, if it's part of your, your production process, yeah. don't do it quite Tread yet. lightly, back it up first, then you know do it on a weekend when you don't have any pressing... Uh, things going on. I've actually listened to you and I haven't done it yet. You've you got, have. You, you actually listened to me this I, time. I, 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 I'm totally terrified. Howard Kogan, if you're listening, you didn't listen to me. And it did take your studio down. <laughs> Bad I've boy. I've learned to listen to him as Bad he boy. has learned to listen to me. Yeah, exactly. When, especially on items like this. Well, last yeah. one, I don't know if this is a quickie, but we'll try to make it a okay. quickie. Okay. All right. Uh, from Nick Detour. I think that's how you say his name. All right. I'm getting ready to, be, ready to build a collapsible home studio. Does that mean something like the Porta booth, maybe? I will find I'm out. I'm torn. I just need it to be to collapse by three feet along a six-foot stretch 
when not in use. So I guess to he's saying this. it needs to be three by six feet, roughly, maybe, you know, something like that. It's very skinny, apparently. Apparently there's a, you know, an issue with a room being used for right. more than one thing. Uh, which is better? Solid core slabs of one and three eighths inch thick foam from Home Depot attached to hinges or two inch thick sound blankets that are simply attached to hooks. Ultimately, I like the look of and idea of unfolding solid core slaps, but are they worth the time and effort compared to several good blankets? I live under a flight path for an international airport. <laughs> not not going to help. None of that stuff's going to help. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Uh, I bought I bought Larry Hudson's schematic. Really? Larry's a schematic? Yeah. I have the skills to go above and beyond what he provided, but is it even necessary when you're starting out? If you're dealing with airplane noise, none of that stuff's going to help you, man. No, that's <laughs> you live where you choose to live. Yeah, I foam Anything with foam is not going to help you. It's it it takes incredible dense, heavy, heavy walls, right. air gaps. Yeah, you'll you'll have what we call sound transmission through foam. Oh yeah, yeah. And it'll come right through. It and stops echo really well. You'll probably have a very dead sounding space. Yep. You'll just still hear an airplane flying over. So yep. if you're like where I used to live near LAX, you're in trouble because every two minutes there was an airplane. I'm yeah. You it was, I mean, it was like at the end of the runway. Is yeah, I it was recall. really bad. But if if you live somewhere with less active air traffic, you might be able to work around it. But keep that in mind. Either way, whatever which of those two solutions is easier for you, you know, go for it. But I think the blanket's the best way to go. Every time we just hang blankets up, it just seems to help. Seems to work. It seems to help. It's worked in here. It's worked in, you know, and, and, you know, we've, I, you know, we, we, we we should, we can always show that the video of me putting the, the portable booth or my, my portable booth together with the two, with the, uh, the the two inch pipe. Studio suit. Yeah. Yeah, With the studio suit, which is always good for a good laugh, Um, (laughs) but it worked. And I'm yeah. willing to take the laughs because it worked. It but worked. It did. Eventually, we will make Studio Suit again. Yeah. Just not this week. Yeah. Not or this week. next week. Or the week after that. <laughs> it might be 2018, 2019 or something <laughs> when I can hire people to make plan this ahead. stuff. Yes. <laughs> Order now. Order we, soon. We have a strategic plan on that. <laughs> Well, I've got a clip from Chris uh, from the awards show. Should we run that before we go to the break? And Absolutely. Can... Go for so it. So here's Chris. Uh, Chris Fries is coming up in a minute. Receiving an award from the Voice Arts Awards last night. We'll be right back after this. Right, your home trip at LasVegas.com. Paid for by the Las Vegas Convention and Visitor Support. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success. In one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. 
Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the Home Studio Master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. You're listening to VOBS. All right, we're back. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voice artist. Now, VO2GoGo.com's voiceover curriculum is a five-time winner of Backstage Magazine's Reader's Choice Award for Best VO Classes and Best VO Teacher, the amazing David H. Lawrence the 17th. Now, it's 36 classes online or in person across a year-long course featuring not just classes in the art of voiceover, but also in the com commerce and science of running your voiceover business. And each month's class day includes a workout class for all participants. Now, for November, VO2GoGo.com students will master voice bank, voice registry, and learn how to turn non-union voiceover work into union work. Very important these days. And in December, they'll do a year-end tune-up and learn how to find a voiceover agent. I think it's time for me to sign up. Mm. I only have four or five agents. Maybe one more while. Uh, get more details and sign up for the pro membership to save money at VO2, that's a two, gogo.com forward slash VOBS. That's VO2, the number two, gogo.com forward slash VOBS. VO2gogo.com. Everything you need to be a successful VO. Talent. Talent. Artist. Talent. 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 Acting. Okay. Genius. Okay. All righty. And we're back. Well, our guest tonight, we just saw him picking up his award last night. That must have been a lot of fun. Anyway, Chris Fries, welcome to our show for the first time on VOBS. You're That's on. Right, hey. Thanks, guys. Pleasure to be here. Pleasure to have you on. And, uh, you know, we've heard the story. We've heard the story about the prison stuff. We won't even go there tonight. <laughs> I think mean, you've told that story twice since, you know, when we, when we were doing eWebs. It never gets old. But it never gets, I mean, it's a fascinating story. See, we're already doing it. <laughs> We'd rather talk about voiceover and how to be successful with voiceover. Yeah. So anyway, so what was, what was the commercial that you won for last night? Uh, it was for the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority. It was, um... Uh, part of a radio campaign that I was doing through the summer. Thank you. Um, and um, the, uh, uh, it was kind of along the lines of the uh, uh, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas kind of campaign. And I announced, uh, it was a weekly thing where I'd announce the different acts and concerts that were happening in Vegas. And um, one of the, in that particular spot that I, uh, that was nominated, had uh, a band was uh, the Dirty Bucket Heads or something. I'm sure I'm saying it wrong, but uh, it was kind of an unusual, uh, band name. So when I went up to accept the award, I said, I'd like to, uh, you know, thank the dirty bucket heads for allowing me to be here at this particular time. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it was just a different, different rock band each week, but yeah. So, uh, here's to the dirty bucket heads. <laughs> <laughs> inside joke. Inside joke. Yeah, obviously. Very yeah. inside. Well, as long as somebody got it, I guess yeah. that's important. Yeah. So did you like party big time afterwards? Well, I brought my parents with me, so, oh, so that, oh, you can know, on that so right away. Partying <laughs> with your parents. Now, I kind of made a night of it, though. We went out to dinner, and uh, and then we went to the uh, uh, slipped in. Uh, I guess I would have liked to have gotten there a little earlier, but uh, to kind of you know say hi to friends and people I haven't seen in a long time. But we slipped in right around the time uh, it uh, started. And, uh, and then, uh, it was getting to be past my bedtime. I was getting a little tired. So we, we slipped out just before it ended and, uh, such a rock yeah. star, dude. That's, that's yeah. a rock star move right there. I'm really letting down all the, uh, you know, the people who think, yeah, we're partying. No, I went to bed. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> but you look well, great in the talks and that's what's important. Yeah. So you're doing a lot of really cool stuff right now. You're like, you're, you're hitting your stride and just keep running, keep running with that. Now, one of the things that you do and you're probably best known for is doing promo work. And, and it's a mysterious thing, I think for a lot of people, how do you break into promo work? We can talk about some of the things you're doing, but how did you get into doing that specific genre and why is it such a, 
a small fraternity, you know, a little bit sorority, uh, of of uh, a cadre of people that are really succeeding at this. Yeah, it, it uh, well, when I first got into voiceover, promo was one of the genres that I really, really wanted to get into. Uh, and yeah, and it was tough. I uh, Even after getting an agent uh, that handled promos, uh, I'm thinking, oh, this is great. And I'm, I'm set. I just need to start auditioning and it's going to happen. No, not, not really. <laughs> I, uh, um, the biggest piece of the pie was commercial work. Uh, and that's where, um, you know, and I still do quite a bit of uh, commercial work as well. Uh, but now it, it opened up to promo. But the way it opened up was uh, I continued to work and train um, with various people in uh, that, that specialized in promo, uh, like Maurice Tobias, Jody Gottlieb, uh, Joyce Castellanos, David Lyerly, uh, some really good uh, All the best. Uh, teachers that helped kind of get me uh, squared away there so I could be competitive. Because I found that regardless of the genre that you're in, you don't have to be the, be the best at any particular genre, um, you just have to be competitive. And if you're competitive and you get a volume of opportunities, then it's just a matter of time. And um, so I didn't get, that was the problem though, in getting the uh, agent that had, uh, that handled promos. Uh, and as much as I was telling them and I had a demo and they're like, yeah, that's great, Chris. And well, we'll, we'll get you in there as, as, uh, as soon as we can, as soon as opportunities happen. But their frustration, the agent's frustration, was that most of the people that uh, that they um, uh, that got work, uh, you know, were people who already were working in promo. So it was like this catch twenty two. It's like, well, how do you get a new person to get in there? And it's just time and pressure. Uh, it's it's kind of like the uh, uh, adage of you guys have seen uh, um, Shawshank Redemption yeah. uh, and how uh, how the um, Tim, uh, Tim Robbins character broke out of prison Andy with Dufresne. a little pickaxe was time and pressure is all it took him 19 years, but, uh, <laughs> but that's how it, uh, um, okay. Thank you. Uh, the nanny just left. So I had to, oh, <laughs> bye. Have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, I, yeah, so it's just, you, you slowly, but surely try to, uh, you know, stick around and an opportunity comes at you and, that was the same problem I had with trying to even get, um, I was trying to get cope management, uh, uh, to represent me, uh, or to work with them as well. And because they also had great opportunities in promo and trailer and theirs was the same thing. It says, okay, well, all you got to do is book your own promo or trailer, and then you get in touch with me because I like your sound and whatever. But it was like, again, the catch 22 is like, well, you can help me get that point. Uh, so they, they were, it was just a waiting game. And every now and then I'd get an audition for a promo here, an audition for a promo there. And, you know, I'd try, it wouldn't stick. And eventually uh, there was a ESPN baseball game of the week uh, uh, several years ago now, but uh, uh, I'd audition for that and it was a ra for radio spots and, and I got it. And the first call I made was to, um, uh, to Debbie Cope uh, after I booked that and said, Hey, you said that if I booked a promo, I could, uh, you know, we could talk representation here working together. And uh, she was true to her word. She got me uh, a, uh, the, the first audition she got me was for uh, Fox's Brooklyn nine, nine. It was uh, a new show, new comedy coming out for them. And I booked that one, the first one that she got me. And that doesn't normally happen. It's not you know, the first first uh, shot you get you you book but uh but it it, ha it hit and then it was just a matter of okay now you're kind of like in this um this trusted uh, the ring of trust uh if you will uh as a matter of fact scott rummel even told me it's like once you get in then and you you work consistently and hard and you, you put together a good uh, product for them uh, you're easy to work with then they'll find work for you and that's it just kind of started to blossom from there. Uh, other producers started referring me to other projects and, uh, and it's a, it was a snowball effect. It really was. And then more opportunities started coming in. Uh, I started to become known a little bit more uh, among the producers uh, that were, were casting these. And, um, and that's how it kind of happened. So it, it was, it was just time and pressure and you just get that one break 
little break and it turns into something else and it opens up another door and another opportunity. And before you know it, it's like, geez, this wasn't so hard. What was the big deal? But then I realized, <laughs> no, it, it was kind of hard. <laughs> and it was a big deal. Takes, takes patience. You know, I, I think that we, we don't have a very patient society these days and, uh, you know, but if you have stick to itivity and I mean, just read drink and grow rich. That's, that's what it's all about. It's about persistence and just sticking to what it is you want to do. And, and you knew eventually you'd get there and that's, and that's the, the most important thing. What was it that you learned, uh, along the way about what it is about promo read that is so much different than say, you know, standard commercial reads and stuff. You know, it's a, it's an interpretation. It's a storytelling. Uh, the the person who can interpret the best in really any uh, in commercial or in promo, but it is a different kind of interpretation. Uh, you know, wins wins the game, if you will. Uh, and and it, yeah, it is. It's just like the the Brooklyn Nine Nine read was kind of a funny an anomaly where it was very much a character voice. It's not at all my normal speaking voice. They, they originally, the specs for that one, they kind of wanted a Nick Offerman type. Nick Offerman was the uh, uh, Parks and Rec director. Right, for very the dry, Rec. sort of monotone, yeah. Yeah, and so he's kind of, he kind of had that that blase, didn't really care about anything, any talk like this, and it was kind of like this. So it was Fox, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. It's like he didn't give a crap about anybody. And that's what kind of booked me the, uh, the job. But then when we uh, uh, got into the session, the, they directed me to, to be a lot more um, authoritative, bigger, uh, more grand, and it turned into a kind of a dragnet, uh, just the facts, ma'am, you know, kind of like, you know, so it's, so Fox, Brooklyn Nine Nine tonight on Fox. So it, it was. So I'm talking more like this. It's a little more nasally in the back of the throat, and you're talking right in here. And so it's a charactery kind of a thing, and and to have that kind of interpretation and the the, the comic timing when you're um, uh, reading the scripts to you know get those punchlines across because comedy uh, promos very different from say some of the sports or some of the. Uh, uh, drama stuff that I do uh, as well. And, and it's just about telling that story and getting into that place where you can have that great, funny, zinging sense of humor, or you can go to that dark place in your mind and tell that story about, there's a show on Esquire Network that I'm doing called Spotless. And it's a kind of a um, CSI meets Dexter uh, where this <laughs> guy, is, it's, yeah, it's, it's very dark. It's a guy who uh, cleans crime scenes for a living uh, but then he gets kind of uh, blackmailed by the mob to clean their crime scenes, if you know what I mean. So so it's a very dark kind of uh, show, not at all like the Brooklyn Nine-Nine. So there, you, you know, I kind of got into more of like a kind of a Phil Terrence type of a read. He's a trailer guy that's uh, very good in the horror uh, movies. And he's got this real flat uh, uh, kind of creepy sound and you just, you just get real low and get real intimate to the mic like that and, um, and tell that story and that can come across. Uh, right. I also do a lot of uh, visualizations. Uh, uh, Jody Gottlieb taught me a, a few uh, where you just, you think of certain situations um, where if you want to come across really uh, bold and have an attitude and really edgy, uh, she calls it, uh, I'll, I'll do the censored version, the FU read. Uh, where, you know, you just like, you imagine you're saying, you're yelling out to somebody that uh, explicative, and then you go into the script read, and you've got that edge to your read. Uh, and then there's uh, other uh, types of uh, imagery that she would uh, kind of help with to, to, you know, get you into that dark place, that somber place, that intimate place, uh, uh, you know, and then that would help you interpret the script and tell the story uh, the best to put together that uh, yeah. competitive audition. Or that that reminds me, I need to book another lesson with Jody. <laughs> she's sharp as a tack. She, she's, she's very really good. good. Now, now, let me ask you this, because I keep forgetting. I they never put the credits on for who does the the trailers and stuff. You just you hear the voices. Are you who's doing the Americans? Is that you, or do you know who's doing the the trailers for the Americans? No, I don't. I'm not doing the Americans though, but, Darn. uh, no, I, I don't, I don't know who does those. Uh, Cause I mean, that's, it's, it's, what's just what you're talking about. He's, he's not even announcing or doing trailer. He's just going, 
the Americans. You know, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's almost a whisper and it's like, it just draws you in and it really, really works well. We'll have to figure out who that is and get them on the show. Facebook does. <laughs> Facebook. That's true. Yeah, just like, who does, uh, who does the trailer voice? For yeah, that? Yeah. Okay. Or perhaps you could do some research for us, Chris, and find out. And report get to, back. Get right to, on that. Yeah, that, that's right. Now, doing commercials, and you know, you said you were doing those types of commercials, and and then you, you you sort of drifted into promo. Is it more promo work or is it more commercial work these days? Uh, it's split pretty evenly. Uh, the work that I, I I've been, um, yeah, I think it's it's split pretty evenly. Really, um, it's and even then, I'm trying to kind of get away from uh, doing some video games, but video games still keep coming back. Uh, uh, narration has picked up a lot as well uh, recently. So I just try to, uh, I try to diversify as much as I can for a multitude of reasons. One, just for revenue potential, because you just never know when this uh, roller coaster ride is going to end. So you, you work in as many, I work in as many areas as I, uh, as I can so I can keep working and uh, you know, and, and if it's in narration, if it's in uh, commercials, if it's in promo, uh, if it's in video games, uh, but the video games, the reason I was kind of trying to pull away from those a little bit more is uh, all of the video game sessions that I do, I have to go into town for. And I live about 50 miles outside of Los Angeles. And uh, so in the sessions can be anywhere from two to four hours long for a video game session. And it takes me about an hour to get there and an hour to get back. So say if I have a four hour session and then a two hour round trip commute time, that's six hours of my day. Um, and with my increased work in, in promo, uh, as a matter of fact, there was two, uh, another reason that I was not able to come up in, in studio was I got called for to do a Fox college football promo this afternoon. And it was a re relatively, uh, last minute thing. So, uh, you, you gotta be available at a, very short notice. Uh, and if I'm in LA doing a video game, uh, yelling my head off, uh, getting hoarse, uh, it's going to be hard for me to be, uh, ready for, for, uh, for the mic, for a, a promo where I've got to be nice and whispery and intimate or something. Cause, and I'm hoarse cause I can't even talk. So, so yeah. So a lot of times I, uh, I try to limit, uh, if I do do a, uh, video game session it would be like late friday afternoon where i know it's going to be the last session of the day and i have the weekend to kind of recover uh and take care of myself but um but as far as yeah promo versus commercial versus narration it's uh it's whatever we're booking baby <laughs> <laughs> diverse portfolios are what keep you alive right yeah exactly exactly yeah. now doing doing you know doing promo from home i guess most promo guys got to do it from home now which is, yeah. you know, so what do you have in your studio there? How are, how are you set up for, uh, for doing that type of stuff? George would probably be able to tell you better than Maybe I we would. Because <laughs> I'm quite the layman. <laughs> we want you uh, to have, explain yeah, it. That's a cop-out, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> that's a total cop-out, yeah. I'm looking over. Uh, well, I've got a Sennheiser 416. Uh, I've got a uh, Grace 103, Grace M103 uh, channel strip, uh, a, a Mackie Onyx 1220 mixer, um, uh, a Telecephor uh, Extreme uh, ISDN box. Um, lexicon, a little Lexicon Alpha. Yes, I've got a Lexicon Alpha. Yeah, that's so. what brings the audio into the computer. Yeah, yeah. We love the simple. So. We love the simple, basic solutions. I mean, he's got all this great gear, but we just have a simple, you know, Lexicon Alpha. It just works. Yeah, right. <laughs> it just freaking works. Doesn't have phantom yeah. power in it or anything. No, no, you don't need it. It's yeah. just line in, line out. Yeah, very cool. And I have a backup for just. A, I have a backup lexicon. I have a backup Sennheiser. I have a backup mixer, a backup channel strip, uh, just in case. Because obviously, one of the worst things that can happen when you're on in five minutes is uh, you know something doesn't work. And um, so having a backup uh, for for just about. I have a backup for everything except my uh, Telecephor Extreme and and. The only reason I wouldn't there is because that's really expensive to get a backup of that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, really. It's getting cheaper though. 
Yeah. They, they, you can find yeah, them all are. used for well under a grand now. So it's getting a lot more affordable. Yeah. And, and now we're seeing that perhaps, you know, there's, there's now software solutions, uh, to, to ISDN. And, uh, I mean, do you see, let me ask you, do, do you see uh, ISDN going away at all? Or do you see people like phasing other types of things in? Yeah. Uh, I mean, what's your, I mean, totally spitballing, uh, your, yeah. your, your, your kind of balance. How much time do you spend a week on ISDN versus FTP or that kind of stuff? You know, I actually keep uh, bookkeeping that, um, to the, to the dollar and cent, but to percentage wise, as far as what I book, uh, I'm looking right now, 78% of my bookings are ISDN still. Uh, wow. it's, it's very much an ISDN world I'm living in. Uh, 7% are uh, source connect. Uh, 7% is self record or phone patch and 7% is, uh, on location, uh, in town studios. So, uh, yeah, I'm, it's you just very had much that data. You just had that right, data. Right in hand there. I've, oh my God. I got it right here. <laughs> <laughs> really impressed. That's there. Oh, hey. who's there? <laughs> Introduce yourself. Jason. Well, since the nanny left, uh, now I'm in charge. Uh, can, can <laughs> okay, we know please. that one. Oh. Have a seat, buddy. How you doing? Little guy. Hey, Jackson. Hi. Hi. All right. Aww. He's a star. Way to go. All righty. If anybody has a question for Chris Fries, talking about promo commercials, anything, throw it in the chat room, and Anthony will get it into us so we can we can ask Chris about that. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk a little bit about working with an agent. I mean, everybody's like, I need an agent. I need this. I have to have an agent, and that's how I'm going to get work. What are your thoughts on getting any, getting, you know, representation and what's the best way to approach it? Now, clear, you know, clearly what worked for you may not work for somebody else, but give us a couple of examples of stuff that might help uh, someone achieve the representation they desire. You can do a one of, a, uh, the best way is through referral. Uh, there's a story where I was, mm -hmm. uh, I sent out an email to Sandy Schnarr of then Sandy Schnarr Talent, now ABO Talent, a good, strong agency in uh, LA. And um, they, uh, uh, I never got a response from Sandy, but I had a referral from uh, somebody who was a, um, uh, represented themselves as a manager to me, but not a, not a high level manager, <laughs> but uh, no, <laughs> Um, and, um, had, uh, referred me, gave me a introduction to Sandy and I was able to go in and meet Sandy and got signed with her, uh, on the spot. And that was only a week or two after I had already sent her an email, but I never got any response. So referral is going to be your best bet. You can still send out, uh, emails. Uh, I wouldn't recommend phone calls because they can be very, um, uh, intrusive and, uh, you'll probably get cursed out before you get any, uh, benefit from calling an agent. Yeah, if you even sending get out, uh, uh, an email could be, uh, helpful. Yeah. They'll largely ignore that, but, uh, there's a chance now networking through other, uh, events. Like if you were to go to say the, uh, the that's voiceover event over the weekend or the, the show, uh, on Sunday and that when you have an opportunity to meet some agents, that's a great uh, in too hey. to, to get those ins. But um, referrals are going to be first. Oh. Emails can be effective, uh, but it's kind of hit or miss uh, there. And uh, but but yeah, but getting an agent I think is very important. Some people have success uh, doing their own marketing and uh, um, and just generating their own business. I'm not that guy. I need uh, agent help. Uh, you know so. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's how it worked for me. Well, those are the guys that work with through all the network stuff and, and you, and you know, that's, that's where you have to be. Um, what about, you, you talked about coaching. I mean, you work with some of the best, you know, the, the names you mentioned are the top people in, you know, in promo and, and coaching here in Hollywood. Um, do you take regular classes or do a workout group or anything like that? Or do you socialize with other, other voice actors? outside the studio you know i haven't taken a group class in several years um and as my uh schedule permits i'll try to get in a private workout via skype uh uh with uh some of those people that i had mentioned but um i'm i'm really fortunate in that i'm 
so busy that it's hard for me to find time mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, get in private workouts and that. So, but when I can, I, I still think it's very important, uh, you know, for working actors still to uh, be aware of the trends, uh, staying sharp. And, and because too, I do a lot of self-direction, it would be very easy for me to fall into ruts and bad habits so that, uh, and I wouldn't even be aware of it because it's self-direction. But when I get somebody to kind of uh, tell me, no, Chris, it's sounding a little announcery or no, it's kind of sounding sing-songy or it's, you know, you're, uh, it's, it's not coming to life or whatever. Give me, give me that tough love to make sure that I'm, you know, on the right track, uh, is, uh, very important. So when I can, uh, you know, I, uh, I'll do that, but otherwise I get a lot of my instruction from taking direction in sessions, you know, it's, uh, it's work, but then it's also keeping me sharp and they're also keeping me up to date as to what the trends are because I'm working with them right now. <laughs> so they're telling me, you know. And they're the guys that know, and they're the ones that do it day in and day out. So that's that's an important thing. Yeah. Again, if anybody's got a question for Chris Fries, uh, throw it in our chat room because, uh, you know, we can think up just so many questions here. But you guys are the ones that are doing the work out there, and you want to see how you can improve your voiceover business. Chris is one of the really successful ones, and if you have questions about that, throw it in the chat room. We'll get it to him. Anthony will get it to us. In the meantime, we're going to take a quick break and uh, we'll be right back with Chris Fries talking about voiceover here on Voiceover Body Shop or VO. BS. We'll be right back. <sighs> Learning never ends. You continue to grow. Edge Studio has grown. Pursue multiple disciplines in tandem and grow your career. We've added new courses in a new curriculum. We pick the best coaches from the community of working voice actors. A new technology division, engineering and consulting led by George Whittem. Follow your dream. Sign up for advanced learning or register for an introduction to voice acting or foundation studies program. See it all now at the new edgestudio.com. Voice Over Body Shop, where you can learn everything from mic technique to how to market your voiceover business to acting your way out of a wet paper sack, which is my favorite, by the way. Voice Over Body Shop. Learn the latest in voiceover technology. Learn how to get rid of that. Voice Over Body Shop, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on VOBS.US. All right, speaking of buzz. Yeah, we're getting buzz. <laughs> we're going to play the buzz. Yeah, by the way, we're, we, have, we, 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 we picked a new place. I think we have a new place for WoboCon next year. Oh, sweet. Yeah, we on our retreat, we went through this fine, fine facility. We'll have to wait and off find the out strip the and, official word, though. Yeah, actually, Don't leak it's, it. it's on the strip. It's oh, cool. Not, yeah. Oh, okay. Great place. I hear mm -hmm. the food's good. It's a great facility. So that'll be really cool. And awesome. You, and you can do your, your buzz dance again. A fresh buzz dance. A fresh buzz dance. Maybe that's what we'll call it. <laughs> anyway, Chris was able to put his kid in front of the TV and plug him in and <laughs> strap him down and <laughs> <laughs> welcome back. Thanks for coming. Let me get the right button so that we don't hear an echo machine when we turn on. There we go. How about them up? All right. Sorry, All right. Chris. Are you there, Chris? Welcome back. I'm here. I'm here. And sorry about that. Uh, no, 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 yeah, no. Don't yeah, worry yeah. about it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's one of the... By the way, we're in Doug Turkel's studio here. That's right. <laughs> we're, in the, we're in the lovely confines of, of Doug's Florida studio. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, he's got the great microphones. By the way, if you want to have your studio on the show behind us, if you'd like to have Dan and George sitting in your studio, send us a picture like this. Right. You know, and we actually have another view, don't we? We do. We have a we okay. have a we have a camera two view over right. here. So there you're looking into his booth, which is There's actually kind of right cool. There. Right there. It's back right over my show. With a booth that you and I have actually been in before. Right. <laughs> and he's directed me from in there. But anyway, we're talking with Chris Fries. He doesn't have to hear about any of this stuff. Sorry, but, Chris. Yeah, but we wanted to have like this. It actually looks like we're in here, which is actually <laughs> kind of cool. Freaking cool. I'm sorry. Doug's I'm watching, out. he's like freaking out all right. Geeking now. out everything. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I mean, here's, there's an example of something right there. You 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 got how many kids you have? Just the one, the two, or 
two. You two, had two yeah. kids. Got the five year old and a and a fourteen. Well, no, she just turned fifteen. <laughs> so five and fifteen. Yeah, I mean, with the type of work you do, where you're you're on call, you know, pretty often. Uh, how do you balance that family business type of uh, thing? Uh, you know, living oh, the yeah. way you do. Oh, up until six, uh, six or six thirty, the nanny was a big help. <laughs> so <laughs> I remember those days. Now my wife's working late, and uh, and my daughter's at uh, basketball practice, so it's just me and Jackson right now. And uh, but we got Wild Kratts, so we are yes. okay now. Yeah. I love I love Wild Kratts. That's one of the few annoying, non annoying children shows. I think it's actually <laughs> yeah, but it it, uh, it can be a challenge uh, uh, at time. Before we had the nanny, and I was. Uh, uh, still kind of work my way up and, and stuff more. It was, I had to be creative and, um, uh, you know, try to get certain fa- some family members to help out at times, especially if I had to go into LA and that, but, uh, uh, and, you know, daycare and things like that. But uh, now that, uh, uh, of course, my oldest is, you know, she, she won't bother, but uh, Jackson, he, he needs that, uh, you know, Stimulation. video stimulation yeah. there so <laughs> when, when, when he walked in when he walked in it reminded me of when i was doing you know ewebs from my home mm. studio and ella would just appear out of nowhere and want to climb <laughs> on my lap yep. it was very uh, nostalgic seeing him come in it was very sweet <laughs> yeah i remembered that too that was the, it was the first thing i thought yeah, of. yeah we'll to bring her in one of these days absolutely so what do you see as the future of voiceover i mean you were talking a little bit about gaming there and that you're not you're trying to back off a little bit from the gaming work even mm-hmm. though we know it's 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 taking over uh, a tremendous amount of, uh, of the business there but what other trends do you see in the voice in the voiceover business seeing as you're you're doing a lot of different things across a lot of different genres yeah, well, uh, I guess to speak briefly on the the uh, video games, uh, you guys, I don't know if you've talked about it, where uh, the union now has uh, uh, authorized a strike yep. for uh, yeah. uh, for video games uh, regarding uh, session length and uh, kind of like residuals and that, uh, because a lot of these games are selling uh, millions and millions of units and. Uh, while the session fees can be quite nice in video games, they there's no residuals, and um, and once you do once you're done with your your uh, session, you're done. And uh, I've been fortunate enough to be in some pretty big franchises, Call of Duty, uh, uh, Batman, um, uh, and, and the like, and and they they you know sell millions and millions of units, but I'm not seeing any more of that. And that's where the unions uh, stepping in and saying, hey. Uh, this should be, you know, in commercials, in, in so many other uh, areas, you get residuals for uh, work that, um, you know, go if you do on-camera stuff, uh, if it goes to reruns and stuff. I've done some ADR stuff for uh, some TV shows and sitcoms. When they go into reruns, I get paid again also. I've done ADR in, in feature films, and uh, uh, I get paid when that goes to, uh, uh, when it's released in, in uh theaters but then also when it goes uh to internet downloads and such uh, i get checks uh you know from that as well but not the case in video games so that's kind of another reason why i'm pulling back it's like well geez if i'm i'm working physically the hardest and uh and traveling into town uh it's the most inconvenient and it's the the physically most taxing for me and uh revenue wise it's among the lowest uh of the revenues that I, uh, generate. So it's like, hmm, no brainer. I think I might yeah. want to pull back from that a little bit. Mm-hmm. If that changes though, if we do, uh, if the, uh, they come to an agreement, uh, and it becomes a little bit more, um, uh, you know, reasonable for me financially, then uh, it's like, okay, well it's, uh, yeah, that, that now it's more worth, worth my while. And, uh, uh, and something that I might kind of step back into, but as far as future uh, in that, I think it's always, uh, the, you know, the keeping your eye on the trends, uh, like what's popular right now is still very that conversational kind of read. But now there's also that kind of grander style that the character kind of reads are starting to kind of come back, uh, like uh, similar to um, the uh, uh, Real Men of Genius uh, uh, Bud Light campaign, the, guy with the, the authoritative sound. I'm getting a lot of call for those types of sound. It, you know, that over the top comedic authoritative kind of, uh, uh, read is, uh, 
and maybe it's just for my particular vocal type, but uh, I'm seeing that as a, a, a lot more uh, popular in the last couple of years. And so being aware of what some of the trends are uh, is vital for the future, and that will always change in voiceover. As far as technology is concerned, we talked about ISDN. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's still strong, but it, it uh, for me at least, um, but it'll eventually stop. I, I think from my standpoint, because I do work in promos, as soon as some of those networks are no longer able to utilize ISDN, uh, I think they're going to start to switch over to the IP DTL, the Source Connect, and, and that kind of thing. So, yeah. um, but right now, I just uh, if it ain't broke the, for them, then I guess I'm not going to fix it. But I'm ready for when it ha I do have Source Connect. So, uh, and I'm surprised as as to the percentage of actors that don't also have uh, Source Connect. Uh, they just have say ISDN, or they only have ISDN and they don't have the other. That that was part of my plan too, was to make sure I was able to work with whatever studio, whatever they had. If it was a phone patch, I gotcha. If it's ISDN, I gotcha. If it's Source Connect, I gotcha. So uh, being flexible and adaptable was very important for me then, now, and in the future too. So. Yeah. Yeah, and so much for having to do our Source Elements commercial tonight. Yeah, we covered that one. Yeah, we we did. They're actually a sponsor now, Source Connect. Oh, all right. Show, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's take a look at some of the stuff that you've been doing here, Chris, and uh, so you get an, an idea of all these things you're talking about. You know, you paid too much for those glasses. Who? You. You paid too much. Practically everyone overcharges, except for America's Best. Who? America's Best. They give everyone a deal. In fact... You can get two pairs of glasses and a free eye exam for just $69.95. Two? Two. 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 Who? Stop it. Two pairs and a free exam for $69.95. It's not just a better deal. It's America's best. Craft is alive and well in America and currently on display in your derby car. Correction, your son's derby car. Because the rules clearly stipulate that this is a chance for fifth graders to shine, not you. But even stand-in craftsmen deserve a well-crafted reward. At BJ's Restaurant and Brew House, we believe people don't go out for good. They go out for great, because the best times aren't made, they're crafted. When it comes to Brooklyn Nine-Nine, we know four things. One, it's the best sitcom on TV. Two, it's a Golden Globe winner. Three, it's on after the Super Bowl. Well, what's the fourth thing you know? All the lyrics to Taylor Swift's love story. It's like she knows exactly what my heart is thinking. All new tonight after the Super Bowl on Fox. This Saturday just might be the best game of the year. The Michigan State Spartans put up their big defense as Marcus Mariota and the Ducks bring the shock and awesome. College football on Fox, Michigan State versus Oregon, next Saturday. This well, those that's great stuff. I mean, that's stuff that we all see all the time and, and hear all the time. And that that that's that's really cool that you're doing that. Now that owl commercial. How did they do that? Now, that, I guess that was a little bit different from your, your average voiceover job. Yeah, yeah. That, that was for America's Best, uh, a uh, eyeglass, obviously, uh, uh, thing. And they're, uh, they're supposed to be uh, uh, hitting that pretty hard in, uh, in the next few months, uh, continuing that campaign with the owl as their kind of spokesman there. So, uh, uh, but, but that one, they uh, normally with any of these uh, – sessions the voiceover is going to be one of the last things they do to, to lay on top of the finished product of uh of what they've uh, filmed but with this one they they wanted me to come on the uh on camera set uh while they were shooting uh you know the on camera actors and uh i i was like thinking am i going to be in like an owl suit or something what what's <laughs> <laughs> what exactly am i doing here and they wanted me to um be off camera to the actors and there was uh, four different spots so far that we've done. So that, that was of course one of them. And um, they, I was off camera doing my lines and go the, the back and forth uh, banter with the actors. Uh, and they, they just, the, they wanted me to kind of loosen up the on camera actor with the, uh, uh, you know, some of the banter that, and, and they were real happy with the, the finished product. Now I still had to afterward a couple of months later, 
did the uh, uh, finished VO in studio. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, that one was the first and so far only time where I had to go to the uh, uh, set and do the on-camera stuff. And I was sitting in my little director's chair, my off on, off on the side, you know, belting out my lines as, uh, um, as they're going back and forth. And they had a, um, a stuffed owl uh, kind of uh, clipped to the, uh, in that one, uh, the, the park bench. And I'm thinking, are they going to use that owl? Because I was thinking, man, that that is really cheesy looking. <laughs> it was, it's like a you'd win it at like a carnival kind of a thing. Uh, but they're like, no, 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 that's the stand-in owl. They just wanted to get um, the the eye line correct, um, and uh, and that. So they're going to do a CGI owl. It's going to be great, you know, whatever. I'm like, oh wow, okay, that, that's great. But uh, I hope they're yeah, telling was, the truth. <laughs> Interesting. All right. We've got some great questions here from our, our fine, fine audience that is with us every week in the chat room. And, uh, we're glad to have you there. Uh, Anthony, who's monitoring the chat room gets the first question though. Uh, he says, what soft, and I think he was impressed by the fact that you had all those statistics at your fingers, but what software utilities do you use that, that, that not recording process that are not recording or processing, uh, to run your business? For example, were you able to bring up that booking data really quick? Like with the, do you use CRM uh, software, accounting software, that sort of thing? Yeah, no, I, I, I just use a, uh, an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I've just entered the formulas to, you know, total up the columns and uh, figure out the percentages and uh, all that. In, in the previous, uh, previous to going to um, getting into voiceover, I was, uh, I was in municipal government. Of all things, yes, one of the least creative fields to now a very creative field. Uh, go figure. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, and in that, I I worked a lot with uh, Excel spreadsheets. So that's like the one thing I take from my previous life that uh, is still useful now. But uh, yeah, just simple spreadsheets, and uh, it that lets me know it's very effective too. Because there's so many times where uh, every job I do. I, uh, I enter it in there and I'll, I'll highlight it once it gets paid. And there are times where I'll, I'll scroll up and look and I'm like, oh, wow, look, it looks like uh, I haven't been paid for a such and such job. And, uh, and I'll follow up and, and it'll have fallen through the cracks. You know, the, either the creative director, or the producer, or the agent, some, somewhere it, it fell through and I had to remind them. And I'll tell you, every year, there's at least five to ten thousand dollars of uh, payments that I'll uh, collect just from stuff that fell through the cracks. And if I didn't keep track of it, apparently nobody else is. Yep. Nothing's more fun than doing late billing. Guys yeah. Mean money. Uh, Devox asks, uh, "Do you do much voice to picture? Uh, I guess ADR or or uh, you know dubbing work or stuff like that." Um, and, and is there any, any golden nuggets to getting better at that sort of thing? I did take some looping classes and I do, I, I do occasionally uh, do some uh, ADR uh, voice matching. Uh, uh, I had some early experience. Uh, the best early experience I got uh, was doing anime. Uh, and I don't do that anymore, but uh, that one is tough because they try to get uh, um, uh, you to match the lip flaps from uh, when it was a cartoon uh, essentially written for uh, Japanese, and then you have to translate it in uh, English. And sometimes certain phrases in Japanese are much shorter than in English. And, uh, but they'll still write it out and you have to say this line like, hey, Joe, come, come on in, the door's open. But the lip flap is like, two lip flaps and it's like, how am I going to fit that in two <laughs> lip flaps? You know? So, so there's, there's a certain creative uh, uh, work in, in uh, doing certain uh, looping and ADR. Some of the ADR I do now uh, for sitcoms and uh, uh, feature films I did for the odd couple uh, just recently that the ADR there was uh, just a background uh, radio announcer uh, for that. But then, uh, I did some, um, voice matching for, uh, Jeff Bridges in, um, uh, RIPD and, uh, true grit. 
um, where I had to match his uh, lip flaps as well. So uh, and, and to get an exact voice match of his voice print as well, because uh, in R.I.P.D. and in True Grit, if you're familiar with the films, he uses a kind of a, a very gruff Southern accent. And um, in, in the uh, post-production, they found that his uh, he was unintelligible. So they had to, uh, he wasn't available for post, so they'd hire somebody who, did a, who sounded like him. And, uh, and I was able to do an intelligible version of what he said and uh, had to match that to the pictures and that. And uh, um, so, yeah, I occasionally will get uh, ADR and looping in different forms. Some is just a straight on voice match. Some is background ADR. Um, uh, and uh, so there's a lot of, it comes every now and then. And that's where having a good agent will, uh, that gives you diverse opportunities is very helpful because it's not necessarily something I'm pursuing. It's just as they come along, I'll do today. I did an audition for an animation series uh, for, uh, I did promo, uh, I did a trailer and I did commercial and stuff. So, I mean, uh, it's just whatever comes across I'll audition and throw my hat in the ring for and, and go from there. Yep. Chris, you gotta, you gotta watch our last episode. I showed a new technology where the lip flaps, you as the voice actor, will be able to control the lip flap of the other person. Oh, it's geez. freaking <laughs> crazy. You, you, you got to see it, man. Go back and watch the last one. I will. <laughs> it's in the first part. It's, it is hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. <laughs> yeah. we, we got one last question here from Robin Rowan. Lengthy question, so consider it carefully. Uh, how long have you been in voiceover full-time? Do you have a radio background, theater? All of that training and equipment and traveling seems very expensive. I'm sure your current success is paying for that, but did you hold down another job while you got started? I've heard this story before. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to go into too much detail. <laughs> Tell but, yeah. to, to those who haven't heard it. Okay. Uh, well, what was the first part? Let me, I'll take it. Uh, how long have you, you, you been in voiceover full time? Okay. I've been... Uh, since 2004, I was full time. That's when I was uh, laid off from my municipal government job, uh, and, and it was full, full on, full time. I took classes right away uh, and um, immersed myself. And early on, I was doing the pay to play sites and uh, trying to drum up my own uh, business uh, from that, and uh, and then regional agents, and just kind of grew from there. And, uh, so that was that one. So it was the second uh, part of that question. Do you have a radio background? Did you do any radio? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Actually in college, I, uh, I did, um, uh, I worked at the college radio station and I was, I wanted to be a radio personality, uh, coming out. And that's kind of how I even found out that voiceover was an actual thing when I was yeah. in radio. Cause some of the other, uh, on air talent was talking about, Oh yeah. <laughs> he kept saying, voiceover yeah it's really easy money <laughs> that's how they were kind of uh, dropping it to me like oh cool easy money you know something like i could start in like september to make some extra christmas cash or something right yeah but that's the way they made it sound little uh little bit i know it uh it's not easy money any theater uh, any theater uh, no theater background no yeah. just uh uh just radio and, and and you know and the radio thing was kind of cut short because I started to pursue it, but then I, um, uh, I met a girl and, uh, <laughs> it's always, it's always a girl. And then, and then I was, I was going to go, cause the whole thing with uh, getting into radio is you have to be kind of a nomad and be willing to move to different parts of the country all the time. Cause turnover in radio is, is rampant. So, so I, uh, I didn't, it, I was just starting to date, uh, date this girl. And, uh, uh, it was one of those things where it was too soon to say, Hey, pack your bags and, and move to little rock, Arkansas with me. But it was long enough to say, you know, gosh, I kind of want to stick around and see, see how this turns out. The great ending to the story was that girl turned out to be my wife and you're still married and it's all great. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, uh, um, I didn't uh, get too involved in radio. That's when I switched into municipal government. Uh, for 10 years, I was in municipal government and slowly but surely hating my you know, career and, and started to think about voiceover and um, you know, just started to kind of get the itch from there. And, uh, and then once I got laid off, I, uh, I dove uh, 
you know, 100% uh, full full time in there. And then I guess the, to answer the other part of the question was, uh, did I do work uh, working my way up? Was that the other one, right? Yeah. yeah. What did yeah. you do on the side to, to survive? Okay. Well, as you guys could probably tell this story, uh, <laughs> you know, for, for me, but uh, I uh, um, I was trying to figure out a way where I could work at night and uh, still be available during the day because I was doing anything I could, uh, even on camera stuff, to try to find work and to get uh, my union eligibility and that and working during the day wasn't going to work. It was not going to be able, you know, cause I'd go to auditions on camera or voiceover or whatever. Um, and it's just, it just wasn't going to work. And I could work like, say like a bartender uh, type job or a waiter where I'm working like nights or something like that. But two problems with that was, uh, you know, you'd still start your shift, say four or five o'clock and there's still stuff going on voiceover wise, as far as auditions or sessions or something like that, even in the late afternoon, that wouldn't have worked, and especially with my proximity from Orange County and out to LA, uh, you know, making that drive and getting back to a, a, a bartender or whatever job that wasn't going to work. And I also didn't want to uh, not see my family at night for dinner time, put the kids to bed, that kind of thing. So I, I wanted to get a graveyard shift job, and uh, I was going to do something like a, a gas station attendant or a Seven Eleven, you know, whatever minimum wage, just to help uh you know keep that the uh you know, keep floating contribute to groceries and whatever con contribute to the house and a buddy of mine told me about being a, a jailer for la county uh jails uh and um because he's a sheriff a deputy sheriff and uh i was thinking no no way but uh he talked me into it because it was he said oh yeah you don't have to handle the inmates uh you just push buttons from behind this you know glass in a room and whatever and i'm like oh that's that's not bad great benefits, great salary uh, for, for what you do. And, uh, and you'll have no trouble getting the graveyard ship. So I did that. I had to go through an academy, like a boot camp type of a thing, shave my head. And then they're yelling at me. And I'm this guy in his mid thirties with everybody else. that's like 20 years old. And these drill sergeants who are probably younger than I am yell screaming at me. And I'm like, <laughs> what am I doing? And, uh, and then once I get to the jails, uh, there's a shortage of, uh, cause they had a hiring freeze. So they didn't have enough, uh, jailers and deputies and deputies that graduate from the Academy. They go straight to the jail system and then they go out to patrol and whatever they're going to do, but they, they didn't have enough. So I am having to handle inmates and break up fights and toss cells. And, oh, it was just the, yeah, it was, it was, it was bad news. Uh, boy, the stories I could tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, whenever we get together, we actually get together over a beer. I want to hear some of those. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a lot like the They're orange. Crazy. But yeah, so the, 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 the idea there, it did work uh, because it allowed me to, to you know, make a, a nice little salary and contribute uh, because there's so many crossroads that you'll run across that uh, are excuses to give up voiceover because oh, it's not going to work because uh, I, I got to get a job here. I got to do this or uh, so many reasons to, to not do it. But if it's something you're really passionate about and I was and am really passionate about, I was going to make this work and I was going to make it work with my family. And uh, so um, these were the challenges and sacrifices uh, and crossroads that I came upon that said, well, this is, this is the problem. I need money while I'm starting to work my way up. What can I do? And I found this opportunity, uh, not suggesting everybody go out there and become a jailer, but, um, um, but it worked for me and it got me to where I am here. And, uh, and it makes for great uh, cocktail party conversations. <laughs> well, Chris, thanks so much for being with us again, but lots of gold nuggets there of information and lots of good stories about uh, your career so far. So we can't wait to have you on again and you can tell that story again. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Anytime. Alrighty. Chris Fries joining us from Yorba Linda, California and uh, joining us here on VOBS. And uh, thanks again, Chris. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, All George. Right. Alrighty. All right. We'll be right back and close things off right after this. V 
VO Studio Tech. Recording made simple. Hi, I'm Peter McHugh. This is Jim Tasker from Los Angeles, California. Hi, this is Bill Ratner in Los Angeles. Hi, this is Scott Rummel here in Yorba Linda, California. Hi, my name is Rick Wasserman. Hi, this is Tom Kane. Hi, my name is Vanessa Marshall. Hi, my name is Zurich. Hi, I'm Mary McKittrick. Randy Thomas chiming in. Hi, this is Joe Szymanski. Hey, this is Rick Robles. Hi, my name is John Patrick Armstrong. I was turned on to George by none other than Don LaFontaine, who always swore by his help. George is absolutely awesome. ISDN, Source Connect, Phone Patch, FTP, you name it, Georgia set it up. It's really the best thing I've ever done for myself. I feel free, safe, fearless, like anything is possible in here. Unless you like to look for opportunities to waste time, call George. And he did all of that long distance over the phone and the internet. I'm very happy with George and uh, I cherish him. Thanks, George. You make it easy. VoiceOver Extra, the voiceover industry's online news, education, and resource center 24-7. Hundreds, probably thousands of free how-to articles for voiceover success, ranging from home studio to voice acting to business. A free voiceover industry directory, calendar of industry events, resource links, a store, and much more. Bi-monthly webinars on all topics of voiceover, free subscriptions to newsletters, reports, announcements, daily news, and features at voiceoverextra.com. And we're back here on VO. BS. Very good. Uh, yeah, Chris was talking about uh, Source Connect there. That's right, Source Connect. It's a very viable solution for people who can't get ISDN. But this is it's made by SourceElements.com, one of our great sponsors on the show here. And uh, Source Connect is a method to connect two computers together over the internet to send audio back and forth real time. So it's it's easy to explain it as professional skype maybe oh much better than that yeah i mean it's not everybody's calling their grandmother on it right exactly (laughs) it's very very rock solid reliable and the sound quality is guaranteed to be stable it does occasionally have buffers which are part of using the internet but the thing is the sound quality will never vary and the sync is always the same so it's a very very reliable way to connect to studios and a lot of major networks now are even trying it out, like CBS, for example, I know for a fact, was starting to use Source Connect this year regularly as an alternative to ISDN. So if you're looking at entering the world of the ISDN connectivity studio, but you're not going to be able to get a ha- get on it, or it's just insanely expensive, like if you're in Chicago and Dallas where ISDN could be $700 a month, not exaggerating, um, you might want to consider a Source Connect with a bridging system like ISDN to Go, or uh, there's uh, several bridging services out there. You'll be able to connect to ISDN reliably, so it's it's a great alternative. So uh, thanks very much, Source Elements. We really appreciate it. If you want to find out more, go to SourceElements.com and go to Now.SourceElements.com and get a free Source Connect Now account. It's totally free to start using their wow. new Chrome-based, web-based version of Source Connect. It's really amazing technology. All right. Thank you to Source Connect. Yeah. Great product. Great product. Well, thinking of, speaking of great things. What do we have now? We, you now play the announcement jingle. Do I play the announcement jingle? Yeah, that's right. All right. right. Let, me, let me click on that button over and there. And everybody down. Just sit back and relax. It's time for some announcements. All righty. All right. We're back. In case you were wondering. Uh, thanks to our donors of the week, by the way. And mm-hmm. thank you all for, for your donations over, over time here. Eric Aragoni never fails Sunday afternoon. Never Eric fails. Aragoni, he sends in his donation. We appreciate it. Uh, Brian Rausch, uh, Elizabeth Stewart, mm-hmm. Graham Spicer, Paul mm-hmm. Stefano, Antland Productions. Uncle Roy. Uncle Roy. I miss Uncle Roy. I did talk to him on his birthday, though. Oh, had a nice, nice long conversation. They were at Woo Hip. Yeah. <laughs> Woo Hop, Wee Hip. Woo Wee 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 Eating Chinese food everywhere. Thanks. Thanks, Uncle Roy. We appreciate it. Uh, Andy Kaufman, three C or C3M Productions, and the amazingly fast at pen Jack DeGolia. <laughs> Very resourceful he is. Yeah. Sorry I didn't run into Jack yeah. when I was in Vegas. No, but he was know. out in the desert still transcribing last week's show. <laughs> If uh, you guys want to have your your photo on the backdrop, we told you this earlier, but you can send yours in, send it into the guys at vobs.tv, put in 
Send us like one or two angles from your home studio and we'll sit in your studio during the show. I know. And Doug is digging this. And because I know he's in there, he's watching the show and he's like, hey, it's hi, this is here we are in cool. Doug's studio. It's actually, it actually looks like, change the angle again. Go to the angle. Go, go, go to the, the other, the other camera. Yeah. All right. I got to move the mouse over here. Okay. There we go. There's the reverse. Right. And look, and even, and even with my stand, it looks like I'm still in his actual studio. Yeah. Because it, it casts, amazing. A sh- look, it casts a shadow on his booth. Isn't move the stand so- again. Do it. Check that out. Whoa. <laughs> oh, whoa. That's freaking cool. Whoa. Oh, okay. We can go back to oh, this sorry. camera now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Send your photos in if you want to have your studio on. You want to have Dan and George in your studio. It can now be done. That's right. No you can also you call are. us and actually come over to your studio and fix it if it's, it's broken cooler. or make it even better. Uh, let's see here. Show logs. Show logs. Jack, we talk about Jack all the time. Yeah. It's there right above us here on, on our website. Just click on show logs and you'll be able to, you'll be taken to the information you need about when we did it, when we said and it. And it's time indexed. Time so if indexed you said on, it's at one minute or one hour and 48 minutes because the show's too long, you click on it and boom, it jumps right, right, right there it. on YouTube. All right. The podcast. Somebody was asking me about the podcast today. Oh, great. Tell us about it. Yeah, well, the podcast version is for those that can't sit and watch a show all day or all evening or whatever the case is, and you want to be able to listen to it while you drive. I do this a lot. I listen to TV shows on podcasts. I listen to 60 Minutes. I listen to Bill Maher. I listen to all sorts of television shows now that are podcasting them. It's great. So if you want to do that with us, you can do that. You can go to iTunes, type in VOBS, Stitcher, or any podcasting system that you use to listen to podcasts. Type in VOBS. If you can't find it, let us know. We'll make sure that you have a way to get it. So yes. it's a great alternative. Yeah. And we are live. We are actually live. This show is live. Mistakes and all. That's why you see them all. You, we don't edit anything. No words. All uh, the words are still here. Yeah, so. it is truly live. So if you want to be here live, it's at 2 a.m. GMT and, or UTC. Greenwich Mean Time or right. Universal Time, time. Whatever. calendar code I, uh, you know, I have no idea uh tuesday <laughs> that would be tuesday morning for you guys uh, in, in those time zones uh we're in gmt minus eight over here 6 p.m pacific time that is correct and uh, of course we need to thank our sponsors well but we uh, one that's after we're done here we have another new mug man how oh, sweet man your son is like a machine <laughs> he, he, he is he is prolific <laughs> jeez uh he finished this one over the weekend so you guys get to see it first uh, but we need to thank our sponsors too, mm-hmm. because without them, this, we would be still be. You'd be watching us on a webcam, uh, on, on Wi-Fi, Right. And it would from my bedroom or something. I, exactly. Yeah. No, we're here in this fantastic studio where we're, we're here in Doug's studio because of your donations. You know, we can be here, we can be in Florida, we can be anywhere, but, mm-hmm. uh, our sponsors, of course, Harlan Hogan over at voiceoveressentials.com. Uh, voiceover extra again, hoping Nancy Florian's doing better. Edge Studio, your employers. My employers. Uh, source Elements and Rehearsal App. And VO to Go Go. VO to Go Go dot com. Uh, and David H. Lawrence, the 17th. Thanks for all your help with the show. Coming up next week. Terry lovely, Apple. A lovely lady who's written some a, a very interesting book about voiceover. Okay, and cool. she's had an interesting career, so she'll be on next week. I've known about Terry for a long time. This will be the first time I think I've gotten to meet her. Yeah, me too. Very nice. So uh, well, that'll, that'll be exciting. Mm-hmm. Uh, November 30th, Andrea Toyas at Blizzard. Uh, oh, Blizzard and, Games? Blizzard Games. Someone from a game company? Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, now that will be an interesting juxtaposition considering some of the discussion we've had. In the last couple yeah, of weeks. Yeah, we've had a lot of game talk yeah. lately. And then on December 14th, our favorite guys. Yeah. Our, yeah. our buddies, we're going to do another tech roundtable, Audio Masters roundtable with Uncle Roy, Cliff Zellman, mm-hmm. Juan Carlos, Agnel. and maybe more. Yeah, we might have a few more in there. Yeah. So if you have tech questions that you want the entire panel to address, yeah. send them into the guys at vobs.com. If you prefer six or seven opinions to two, this is the night to, to tune in. <laughs> yeah. Right. Also, if you want to volunteer to be a floor manager mm-hmm. or be in the audience, write to us at that same address, the guys at VOBS.tv. Uh, By the way, we have an audience member tonight. 
We do. We we're, have... we're all alone other than that, but <laughs> Jeremy decided to join us tonight. And, uh, Thanks we, for coming, Jeremy. Yeah, get a shot of him over there. <laughs> he's, he's chilling on the couch. He's in the comfiest <laughs> spot in the whole place, man. Yeah. Maybe we should just do the show from over there. How yeah, you doing, yeah, man? Yeah, yeah. Hey. All right. <laughs> Maybe we should just do the show from over there one night. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just chill. We had, well, I remember we had Chuck and Stacey on. We used the couch. That's right. That, that was that was cool. All righty. Uh, okay, we need to thank the wives. Uh, Marcy, for now coming in here at you know at 5.15 going, have you gone through the rundown? Okay, good. I'm out of here. <laughs> She's now our, our new producer. Uh, she did save us one time because we the audio wasn't on one of my shots. That's true. She ducked in, so she's already paid for herself. All right. And, and we're paying her well to do yeah, this. Yes, very high value. Right. Our, our our producer who gets us this great guest like Chris Fry's uh, Kathy Currenden. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Anthony Gettig for his usual fantastic work in the chat room well, this along evening. Shelly Avelina. And when, and when she's in there, of course, yeah. asking questions, making sure that something's being asked. <laughs> uh, and uh, Jack DeGoli, of course, for scribbling down all of the show notes. So you have access to that information. And Lee Penny gets the podcast up online every week yes so thank you right. and of course thanks to chris rise for for being with us and being a fantastic guest and giving us all that great stuff yep. so that's going to do it for us this week we'll see you next monday night 6 p.m pacific standard time minus eight gmt that's right two o'clock gmt or utc utc two utc Write it right into us and tell us what the heck that means. I have to look it up on <laughs> Wikipedia. But anyway, anyway, we've got a mug man coming up. Have a great weekend and a great week to go before it. Don't ask me why I said that, but have a great week. <laughs> Do lots of auditions. Got any questions? Write to us here at the guys at VOBS. Take care, everybody. Have a good night. See you next time. <laughs> I'm bored. 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 Oh my god, I cannot believe how bored I am. This is so boring. Everything is so boring. I'm hungry. Hi, Dad. What? Huh? Oh, phew. Oh, it's just you. Pimenta, my daughter, who definitely isn't scary at all. Oh. <laughs> Don't kill me! Take my wallet! <laughs> Oh my gosh, a free game! My boredom is over. Hey, what you doing, Manta? Mugman! Wanna smash this game with me? Boink.